Hello, I'm Gabriel Garza. Welcome to People in Perspective. Today joining me here is Alejandro Benitez, who is an educator at the WSB community. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for having me. Appreciate um, it. So what exactly is the WSB community? Uh, very good question. Uh, we're a group of people from all different walks of life uh, in a community, like you said, to deliver financial education. So usually, you know, financial concepts that we don't really learn neither in school or the family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and is there anything specific that you teach there? Yeah, so we teach pretty much everything that has to do with finance 101. It's like if you took a class here in high school and it would be about everything that has to do with finance, like how to save your money, how to invest your money, you know, how to build wealth the proper way. You know, many times school does a very good job to uh, give us a, a good career, you know, a good profession. But at the end of the day, we don't really know what to do with the money that we make, all right? So sometimes we commit mistakes because we are not financially literate. Mm -hmm. And um, what's your main demographic as audience? Uh, you know what? This is very interesting because uh, I come from a Latino community. I'm uh, from, I'm actually was born in Mexico. I was brought here when I was very little. And uh, right now, you know, I try, I you know, reach out to all communities, but specifically the Latino community is where I work the most. But uh, the awesome part about what we do is that there's more than a hundred different types of nationalities that are part of this uh, campaign, right? So we have nationalities from, you know, Africa, from Europe, from Asia, you know, and that's something that interested me the most because uh, this does not have a specific like, uh, you know, language or, or race or even uh, age, right? We have people that are 65 years old, you know, in this community. We also have people that are 18 years old because you do have to be minimum 18 and over, right? Be over age to be part of what we do. Uh, but that's, that's what I really like about this community, that it's open to any type of, of people. Mm, and how's that, how has education been during COVID? Oh man, that's, it's crazy because I don't know if you've ever heard about you know the concept of when there's crisis for some people there's opportunity for others mm -hmm. have you heard that before yeah right so uh, i feel like during covid it was interesting most people were at home most people were struggling financially more than just like health wise i feel like people in you know were struggling more in their money because when you can't work because of health issues or simply because there's a health issue going around what affects us the most is also money wise right because we don't have the money to even pay sometimes our bills, right, our, our debt. Uh, that is why during pandemic we were busier than usual because we were able to uh, educate the community through the online platform. And uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, here in school, you guys also kind of are starting to move into that new era of technology, something that I was uh, listening to earlier in, uh, in another interview. But um, that's the same thing with us. You know, we're transitioning. Uh, the old financial industry used to be more uh, you know, you know, very in person, and now we're transitioning into okay. You could do a hybrid in person, or you could do it online as well and receive this education. Mm. <clears throat> and um, has anything changed with offices like during COVID? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, during pandemic 2020, I had uh, I think I was 90 percent in my room <laughs> like during COVID because I had my my little office there. You know, I had. Uh, my computer set up so I could, and so I never stopped working during pandemic, right? Uh, but once we got back, kind of like started opening, opening up again, which right now, you know, it's kind of, you know, iffy with everything that's going on, but we started to go back into the offices, but we did have a problem that not a lot of people wanted to go back. You know, they're like, oh, online is so much easier. You know, I, I feel like we can get more done online and being at home in the comfort of your own home, right? So yeah, we did kind of have that struggle where a lot of people didn't want to go back to the office. But again, I feel like that's in a lot of industries. It's not only you know with you know finance industry. It's with I think all industries, right? I think now everywhere you're finding you know people being able to go to an office or go to their workplace, but also you know work from home. So, um, but yeah, it did affect in that way <laughs> that a lot of people don't want to go back to the office. And uh, before COVID, how has WSB affected you? Oh man, this is this is uh, I think that WSB in this community of uh, financial educators has really it helped me right after college um, organize myself, right? Because I'm going to share with you something really quick. When I was in high school and college, I was I studied psychology, so I did not study finance. It was pretty interesting. 
Um, and once I graduated, I realized that, yeah, they taught me how to be an awesome psychologist, right? But they didn't really teach me how to save my money, how to invest my money. And coming from a minority background, you know, coming from a minority family, we don't really get these type of resources like passed on to us from our past family members because we were only taught to work hard, you know, coming into this country. So, you know, that's the lifestyle I was living. Even though I was raised here, growing here, you know, I grew up here all my life. I still had that mindset of make a lot of money, but also spend a lot of money and kind of like live day to day and not really look into my future and, and see, you know, how I can better my finance and better my, my family's finances, right? So uh, that kind of, you know, WSB and, and this financial education really helped me organize myself overall, you know, look more into the future and say, hey, I am young, but you know, I, I can end young if I want to. If I start saving now, I could retire at an earlier age, right? I don't have to wait until I'm 65 or 67 years old. So that's when I started, uh, you know, applying this education. Because one thing is learning, right? And another thing is actually like applying what you're learning, right? So it's kind of like anything in school, right? You get taught a math topic. If you don't apply it every day, you're gonna forget about it, right? So that's what the WSB helped me, you know, understand that it's not only about learning, it's about actually taking action about what you're learning. If you are learning how to save, well, learn how to save. You know, if you're learning how to invest, learn how to invest and take action. So when pandemic hit, I was in a way already, I wouldn't say fully prepared, but I was prepared financially, right? Because I did have an emergency fund in case of an emergency. Right? I did have my protection in my own life and my family. So I was ready in case something did happen to our family. You know, I was able to, to attack it right away. And that's something that old me, right, before this uh, financial education wouldn't have known how to deal with an emergency like the pandemic, right? Because so many families dealt with that. You know, so many families were attacked right away by COVID, either by health issues or by financial issues, right? So. I think that once you have this knowledge and you learn how to apply it, it's much easier to attack these type of problems. Mm -hmm. And um, was WSB your first job or did you have other career paths you took? Oh, okay. Uh, this is very interesting because I did mention right now that I did study psychology. Mm -hmm. I actually went to NIU, Nor Northern Illinois University. Uh, but I was a dancer before doing uh, financial education. I used to get paid to be in quinceañeras and I used to get paid to teach quinceañeras. So I don't know if you know what quinceañeras are, but they're a big celebration in the Latino community. Mm -hmm. And I did that for, since I was 15 until I was 23 years old. So I did that for eight years. That was my only job growing up. So when I transitioned into this new career, you would say in the financial industry, it was hard for me because I was like, how are people gonna believe me? You know, I was a dancer before, you know, and I'm, at, I'm 23, I was 23 at the time. But uh, eventually I, I love what I do and I feel like the passion towards what I do is what help me get to you know many uh, families to uh, for them to able to trust me and open mm -hmm. up to to me mm -hmm. so in this new job that you took at wsb um is there anything that uh that's particular that you could teach or learn like what like is there like a specific way to save money that's a very yeah i love that i love that and, I, and i'm glad that you asked that because um i'll share with you what i have learned throughout this you know campaign and I'll share with you what is it, you know, a couple of topics that we teach, right? Um, and then this is gonna be pretty quick, all right? So uh, one of the things that we teach is that it's not about how much money you make, it's about how much money you keep, right? So you could be making a million dollars a year, but if you're spending a million dollars a year, you don't have anything left, right? So uh, the importance of saving that 10% of your paycheck, doesn't matter if you work at McDonald's, if you work in a you know, movie theater, or you already have your career, always try to save that 10%, right? So you could build a saving habit. So I think that's one of the most important things for young people, especially because, again, we're very good at making money possibly, but we're not very good at saving it. Mm -hmm. And is there a time, a specific year, when one should start like saving the 10%? Oh, I think you should start saving that 10% since you're able to earn money, right? So it doesn't matter if you're 15, you're 16, when it's your first job, I think that the moment you start receiving money, it's important to always have the discipline to save that 10%. And to help you out, save before you spend because if you spend before you save you're not going to have anything left over after you spend it all well thank you for joining me on this program today it's been a pleasure meeting you and learning more about your life and about financial education um see you next time on people in perspective